sense. Hi everybody! Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira and today I am working on the Adams Family House. More specifically, I am working on Uncle Fester's room. The rest of the house is pretty much stocked with a lot of miniatures, but there's nothing really for his room because I didn't originally plan to create it. So today I'm going to show you how I make just a couple things. It's kind of a hodgepodge of things I need to make. And then I'm going to be pulling from my personal stash of random miniatures I have collected over the years to kind of fill up some space in his room. Another thing I wanted to let you know is that um, because Kin on my Facebook page sent me this picture, I cannot stop thinking about making a room for Cousin It. Originally I was going to go off the movie version where he did not live with them, but I just can't stop thinking about how amazingly cute it would be to make this tiny room. So I have decided this space over here, this is my cousin It, you haven't seen him yet. I'm going to be building it very similarly to the way that I built Uncle Fester's, so I will probably be doing that off camera, but I will show you the way that I detail the inside and I am planning to give it a copper roof because I don't want to have to touch another shingle for at least five years maybe. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a different roof. So I will make sure to show you that part. Today for Uncle Fester I will be making a desk, a ladder, I will be cutting a hole in his roof, and I will be making a little TNT detonator, which I do have a free pattern for you if you want to check it out in the description box below. You can download it and make it along with me. So let's get started. I'm going to start off creating Fester's desk. Now I'm not doing a completely exact tutorial here because I'm fitting it into a weird space, but I'm going to show you roughly what I'm doing. I'm using balsa wood that's about a quarter inch thick and two pieces of basswood. One of them is a quarter inch by an eighth inch and the other one is a half inch by half inch dowel. Now I'm not a huge fan of balsa wood but it is easy to cut. I used it in my abandoned coffee shop and when you're using large planks of it it really can take a lot of aging and I really like how it looks. But when it comes to structure, balsa wood is not what I would go for. So that's why I'm using the basswood dowels for the legs of the desk. So I'm just cutting some gouges into it. I'm making sure that I'm rounding off the sides of the table and in the top of the, because this is going to be Fester's desk, I'm just cutting some gouges to make it look like maybe some explosions went off. You never know. Now I'm taking my basswood dowel and I'm going to use my craft easy cutter. I always get questions about this tool so I'll leave a link, an Amazon link in the description below so you can find it if you're interested. It makes it really, really easy to cut basswood dowels. So what I'm using the basswood for is to create a frame on the bottom of the desk. Usually desktops, especially if they're made out of wood, they have some kind of frame underneath. This is also going to make it easier for me to attach the legs and use enough glue so that I'm certain it will not, uh, the legs won't break off easily. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Again, this is for Uncle Fester, so perfection is not really what we're going for here. Once I have a rectangular frame on the bottom of the desk, I am going to be cutting these legs so that from the uh, floor to the top of the desk is about three inches, which is a typical standing height desk. And then I'm going to be taking my X-Acto knife to the edge of the basswood dowel, and I'm just going to be cutting down um, the sharp corners to make it look like they've been worn uh, year after year. Now I'm just adding some glue in the corner and I'm going to stick that basswood dowel right into the glue. If you're going to be using stain for this, you want to be super careful about where the glue goes, but I'm going to be using acrylic paint so I'm not being really careful with the glue. Um, so just keep in mind what material you're going to be using. 
I'm only putting two legs on this desk because it's going up against a slanted wall and I will show you a picture of that in a second but um, you can add four legs if you want to try this out and um, have it sit level on the floor. Right now I'm adding a shelf to the lower level of the desk and so I'm just measuring things out and I'm cutting a square on each corner so that I can carefully fit it up against the legs and put glue there so I know that the shelf will stay put. So this is how it will kind of glue in and you can see that there is that slant from the back of the desk to the back of the shelf. Again, when I show you the picture of how it sits inside of Uncle Fester's attic room, it will make a little bit more sense. Like I said, this is why I'm not doing a tutorial on this because it really only fits this specific room. So I am using acrylic paint. Like I said, I didn't have to be super careful about where that glue goes, but if you do decide to use stain, stain will not go on top of glue and it will leave a very uneven look. So I personally use acrylic paint more than stain because it doesn't smell and uh, you can water it down and get just the same amount of effects that you can get with stain I've found. Other people may have a different opinion, that's just how I feel. Now, of course, I need to age it. This is Uncle Fester's desk, so there's probably been all sorts of who knows what going on on that desk as far as uh, experiments and all sorts of things. So I'm going to give it a good amount of aging, some pretty obvious aging, and uh, using different colors like black and um, some different types of brown. And then I'm also going to be taking this round, uh, it's like a little flower pot, and this is one thing I like to do in my aging. If you want to make it look like there was something round sitting on a table that left a mark, say you want to make it look like there's coffee cup stains or paint, um, like paint bucket stains, you can use something round, dip it in paint, and then put it on your surface. I did find because the balsa wood is so porous, it kind of soaked up the paint and you can't really tell that it's a circle anymore. So you kind of have to play with that, especially if you're using balsa wood because that uh, paint color will spread. Now I'm going to be making a ladder for Uncle Fester's room and I promise this will make sense once we get into his room. But ladders are fairly simple to make. They're kind of annoying to make. And so I was trying to find the best way to do this. This is a basswood square dowel that's, um, I think it's about an eighth inch by an eighth inch. And I went ahead and cut two lengths of the basswood that are the height of the ladder I want to make. And then I took another uh, dowel of basswood and then I cut a bunch of one inch lengths of the dowel. Did that make sense? I hope so. And so I'm just going to put it on some wax paper. This is the easiest way I have found to do this. And again, I'm eyeing it. As you can see, I have not lined it up with the clearly marked grid underneath my wax paper, which would probably make things easier. But if it's not straight, it'll match most of the other stuff in the Adams Family House. Once I have one side of the rungs completely attached to one side of the ladder, I'm going to add some glue to the other side and then just line up the other long piece of the ladder. And then I'm going to set that on that wax paper to the side to dry completely. I do not want to touch it until it is completely dry because the whole thing will fall apart. I did find after I had done it this way, it was a fairly strong structure. I did go back and add a little bit of extra glue on those joints and uh, anywhere I felt it could use a little bit and then I painted the entire thing black. I did find this little miniature toolbox just randomly and I thought it'd be really cute. So now I actually need to cut a hole in Uncle Fester's room in order to add the ladder. I want some roof access here and I knew that when I started making Uncle Fester's room but I forgot. I guess halfway through and so luckily if you haven't seen how I made Uncle Fester's room I'll leave a link in um, the description box but it is made out of foam board and mat board and so it's fairly easy to cut through. I didn't again measure or make things straight uh, but I just kind of eyeballed it. I've, I've found that with the Adams Family style that uh, works. It really does. And so I'm just kind of going with it. 
and uh, once I get the um, hole cut I'm just gonna go back and just fix up any edges that um, are a little bit too rough for my taste now that I have some exposed foam board I'm gonna take some wood glue I'm just gonna get a little bit on my finger and then I'm going to go over the surface of the foam board this is gonna give me a decent painting surface because I do want to fill that entire area in with black paint and I could do brown as well um, but I just decided to go with black for some reason and eventually I will make the flap that goes on the roof but I'm not doing that part yet now I want to make it look like there are some supports for this hole in the roof and it's not just a random hole and so I'm adding in these little dowels and then I'm aging them just like I did the boards for the ceiling so now um, I wanted to make some miniatures for Fester's room and this is a free download in the description box you can check it out it's a little TNT detonator box because he does a lot of um, explosives and stuff like that and so I wanted to make one of these it's real kind of cartoony looking and I really like that about it um, I'm gonna first take the piece that's marked bottom and I, I cut these out of 1 16th inch thick mat board which if you've been a part of my channel for a long time you know I make pretty much everything out of that and then I'm going to take the piece marked front and I'm going to glue them in an L shape then I'm going to take the two side pieces and glue them uh, so that they are behind the front piece and I'll show you a close-up look of that it is fairly easy to put together I mean basically it's just building a box pretty simple but um, I thought it'd just be a fun little download for you guys if you wanted to make one so once you have the front and the two side pieces on you should have something that looks like this and then the back piece has this little hole in the bottom of it and that's how you can know that it's the back piece that's where we're going to have our wires coming out of the bottom I'm going to glue that on trying to make sure that my corners are staying as square as possible and then our last piece of course is the top and I'm just going to add glue all around the edges and then carefully put the top on there so that it completes the box if you have any mat board that ends up sticking out over the edge or it's just not quite straight you can take an exacto knife and cut those pieces off or you can take some sandpaper and just kind of gently sand the box at however you need it so that the all the sides are really smooth just make sure that you still have that little opening at the bottom now I'm going to be taking some red paint and I'm going to paint the entire thing in one or two coats of red depending on how it covers. I think I ended up doing two coats of red and then I aged it with just some watered down black paint because of course I want to make sure it looks like it's been used a few times. Now I'm taking a 16th inch by 16th inch dowel and if you don't have this there's all sorts of different things that you can use to make this part um, you can even use mat board to make this part if you can't if you don't have one of these little bitty dowels or even like um, a piece of wire what I did there is I used a sharpie to color it instead of painting it and as you can see I didn't let the sharpie dry so it left a mark on my paper but I'm just lining it up with the lengths that I need to cut I need two of the shortest length one of the medium length and one of the longest length and if you download the little um, free download it shows you those lengths on there so now I'm going to take the medium length and I'm going to add some glue to the very bottom and stick it as well as I can in the center of the top of the box and I'm going to kind of move it around and just kind of eye that it's in the center and then I'm going to take my two smallest pieces and these are going to be support for that center pole one other thing you can do is drill a hole in the top of the box to actually insert that medium-sized piece I don't know why I did it this way this is the way I did it 
originally when I first made one of these and so this is the way I'm doing it now. But these two smaller pieces go on either side of the medium pole just to give it support and a little interest. Now I'm going to take the longest piece. I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the top there and this is going to make a T type structure. This is where the person would like put their hands to like push it down and then you know boom. And then I'm going to carefully paint the letters T, N, and T on the front of the box. I'm trying not to say too many words that's going to get me flagged <laughs> by YouTube. I'm really trying. Um, so now I'm going to take some embroidery thread and I'm going to take one end and add a little bit of glue. This is to help it go through the hole in the back of the box. And I'm going to thread it through and then take a little bit more glue and just make sure that it is glued in there and will not be coming out. Because this is embroidery thread, it is where you can like split it. And so I split it into a couple pieces. You can kind of play with this, whatever, however you like it to look. And um, just cut it to whatever length you want. You can even hook it up to something if you want. Um, and then I'm just going to use glue on any intersections and on the rest of the thread to set it how I want it to look. So it's time to go pick out some miniatures for Fester on the dark side of the room. I've been collecting miniatures for every single room of the Adams Family House for the 10 years that I have been creating it. So now I am having to kind of pull miniatures from here and there to fill up Fester's room because I never had originally planned to make this room. So I'm just kind of grabbing whatever I think would work and uh, we're just going to put it in there and these are going to become Fester's miniatures. I might play around with it and of course these are all like brand spanking new. They don't have any aging and so I will show you what I pick out here but the next time you see them I probably will have used some paint. Some of them don't need aging like these metal miniatures but like the brand new looking tool chest. I don't even know what that is but I thought it looked like something Fester might use. But like the bright red bucket, all of these things are going to need some aging so that they fit into this very aged room. Well this was a super weird video guys. Usually I feel like I have a beginning and I have a tutorial and then I show you at the end what I made. But I made a desk and a ladder and I cut a hole in a roof and then I grabbed a bunch of miniatures and put them in a room that I already made. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. It's kind of how my brain was working this week and um, it's just one of those things that you it's really difficult to make every single miniature for a project and so sometimes you just have to grab from what you have. There's still lots to do in this room. I still have to work on Fester's bedding. He needs a little bit more furniture and uh, but yeah I hope you guys are still enjoying just the process of it all and I will see you guys in the next video.